All right. Let's get this thing going. I think I'm streaming. Let me just double check something here, folks. There we go. There we go. All right. Welcome to the show. Uh, I'm Chris, and uh, tonight I'm just uh, planning on doing a little bit of inking, a little bit of sketching, uh, going to chat with all of you. Um, what else can I say? Um, let me uh, hit up the thumbnail here. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Appreciate anybody joining me tonight. Uh, I host a show called Comic Tropes, where I talk about uh, comic book history, techniques by various creators, kind of dig into the weeds there, and uh, every once in a while I'll have a live stream where I can just, you know, catch up and chat with everybody, and uh, that's what I'm doing tonight. Um, as far as what I'm drawing... Uh, drawing uh, Wayne and Dell from the uh, streaming show Wayne, which you can see uh, for free on either Amazon Prime or uh, YouTube. I think it's pretty cool. So that's what I was in the mood to do today. Let me just make sure, see if, uh, yeah, it looks like I've got several people jumping into the chat. So thank you, folks. Appreciate it. Um, I'll be chatting with y'all in just a second. Um, let me just um, post that this has gone live so that, uh, you know, some people can potentially see it. Um, some more people, I mean, haha, <laughs> some people. You all count as people. In fact, you're probably the most wonderful of the peoples. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see, how do I share this? How do I share this? There we go. I'm just copying the link and... Uh, posting it to uh, to my Twitter account uh, how's everybody doing tonight I know it's pretty late in certain time zones uh, it's eight o'clock my time couldn't really do it earlier because I worked today and um, it was a tough day I uh, I I um, I sell cars for a living, so I work on commission, and uh, I would say that I'm usually uh, pretty good about it. Um, hold on, let me just mention this. This is exciting. Matt, thank you so much. Um, I appreciate that. A two-pound uh, super chat. I really appreciate that, because actually that ties into what I was just about to say. So typically I'll sell, I'll sell a car or two, or maybe even three or so uh, a day. I do all right, but today... It was really quiet at work. I didn't sell a car, which means I spent eight hours at work earning zero, <laughs> zero dollars today. But that's okay. That's just how it is sometimes. Sometimes you sell a bunch, sometimes you don't sell any. It balances out. Uh, 4 a.m. 4 a.m. Matt, you must be, uh, what, like somewhere in, in England maybe or, or thereabouts? Um... Let's see, um, got a bunch of folks in there tonight. Thank you so much. It's, it's awesome to have company. Um, I'm just here to, to talk comics while I sketch. It's not that I'm trying to show off my art skills, just always, I always like drawing. Every once in a while I do it live, try to brush up on some skills maybe. And uh, it's a great opportunity for me to, to chat with everybody. Um, so that's all I'm looking to do. Wow, I just got another super chat. I was not expecting that. So, John, thank you so much. I, he's got a, a dancing pair that proclaims number one fan. Well, that could just very well be the case. Uh, it's not everybody that will pay money, hard-earned money, uh, to, to give me a dancing pair. So thank you very much. 5 a.m. in Gay Paris. We love you, Chris. Well, thank you, Fernando. Um, thanks, everybody, for, for being here. Um, hope you all got a chance to see the latest episode I put out. Um, it's on uh, 
the idea of how comics were often used as intentionally used as propaganda in World War II. Primarily, of course, I'm focusing on a lot of American comics, but I do pepper in uh, some commentary on the fact that uh, there were other countries, uh, both allies and enemies, that used um, comic books for the purposes of propaganda during World War II. I thought it was um, just an interesting topic. Uh, I It was exciting for me. I got to talk about what I'm passionate about for the episode to be any good. But um, yeah, I'm proud of how it came out. So I hope that uh, folks had a chance to see that. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely pretty happy with that one. So um, that's the latest. And then, you know, with YouTube, you, you, you never really get a chance to uh, rest on your laurels. Actually, I don't really understand that phrase. What is a laurel? I know it's a name, but what is what is resting on your laurels mean? Are laurels accolades, maybe? Could be resting on them. That's a weird metaphor. But anyway, you got to keep moving. And uh, so I'm already hard at work uh, uh, researching and writing the next episode and uh, hope that that doesn't take me too long to get to all of you in the meantime I uh, just thought it would be kind of fun to do something a little different and do this oh I can think of a question I've got for everybody I know what to ask so one thing that I've introduced in in 2020 onto my channel is I like to do the occasional interview with um, with folks in the comic book world. Um, not something I like, you know, want to change the channel to a full-time interview channel, but, you know, I do enjoy doing interviews and, and diving into somebody's work um, schedule. So, uh, with that, bearing that in mind, that I do interviews, you know, now, and, and we'll reach out to, to creators and stuff, um, who would you be interested in seeing me interview you know um is there somebody that out there that hasn't done a lot of interviews or somebody who you think you know i i would be able to get something out of or connect in an interesting way um if you've got a suggestion you know leave something in the comments i'd be curious to hear if there's you know somebody in comics that you think that for a specific reason i should uh try to reach out to keeping in mind just because even if I'm interested doesn't mean that I can necessarily get that person just just keep that in the back of your mind um, there's been several people I've been talking to but figuring out a, a schedule is is definitely the the biggest problem Brian Hitch Carlos Pacheco Greg Capullo um, Creators from Webtoon, Frank Miller, Joe Matarera, Cullen Bunn, Trad Moore. I don't know Matthew Rosenberg. That one doesn't ring a bell. Dan Klaus? Sure. Jim Shooter. Jeez, I don't know if he'd even want to talk to me. Another Carlos Pacheco. What about REIQ? I don't know what REIQ is. Daniel! Daniel Carhoonan is here. He's the writer of a book that I just did the lettering on that just came out called Loxor. Thanks for promoting the Loxor graphic novel in the recent Comic Tropes episode. Hey, it was my pleasure to do that, uh, Daniel. Thank you so much for uh, hiring me to do the lettering. I thought that was a really fun book, and since I'm talking about it, I'll just mention it again, folks. Uh, Loxor is a really cool um, comic out there. Um, oh, Chrissy suggests I should talk to Paul Shear. He has worked in comics. I actually have interviewed Paul before, um, back when I did a TV podcast. Uh, we, we got along very well. Um, maybe I should reach out to him and do a, an interview for, for the show. That would be interesting. Um, so, um, I lost my train of thought because there's so many things going on, but, uh, let's see. Looks like I've gotten some more super chats here. Um, thank you. That's that's just amazing. Um, let me scroll up and see. Josh Padilla, or Padilla, thank you, and Glenn Cochran. Thank you both for the super chats. Um, that's that's amazing. I didn't sell a car, but I guess I'm getting some super chats. So you know what? Good day. Good day for Chris. Thank you very much. Do I play any video games? Um, yes. 
Not as often as I used to since I started my YouTube channel because, you know, I, I sort of feel like, hey, if I've got time to do something fun, maybe I should instead be like, you know, working on the next comic tropes instead. So a lot of times I will sort of like realize that I've got the impulse to do something like uh, play a video game and I'll instead sort of focus that impulse and, and instead work on comic tropes. But sometimes I'll take a little bit of time out. I did play the recent Miles Morales game on, on PS4. I don't have a PS5, but on PS4, and I liked it. I liked it quite a bit. That was a that was a very fun game. Um, I like first-person shooters a lot, um, but I don't really have the time to commit to getting good at a first-person shooter. Like, you know, even if I pick up, for instance, the next Call of Duty, I probably won't get as good as I used to um, on those games, because I just, I really can't, I can't be investing that kind of time these days anymore. Um, playing a video game to uh, the best of my ability. Um, I like games. I just don't play them a lot. But if I came across a PS5, I probably would buy one. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, thank you for the comment on the new animated intro. I was so excited to debut that. Um, uh, I hired Harry Partridge to do that. He and his uh, assistant, Yap, I think really knocked it out of the park. If you haven't seen it, the latest episode I uh, uploaded also features my brand new intro. Uh, there's a lot to digest in it. It's only about 10 seconds long, but there's a lot of references to sort of uh, comic, various types of comic books and specific characters with sort of knockoff versions. And it scrolls past a lot of them in rapid succession. Uh, that's very intentional so that like, you know, if this is a, an intro that I plan on having for a while, there's still sort of new things to pick up on over time. I mean, I know, of course, you could just go frame by frame and and note it, but I think it would be more fun to just sort of over time realize, oh, you know what? In the deep background there, yeah, I'm noticing that Liefeld character now. I, I get it, you know. Hopefully that's fun. Um... Uh, greetings from Mexico. Hola, Toto. Uh, nice intro. Cool that Harry did that for me. Well, it is cool. Uh, he didn't just do it for me out of the kindness of his heart, although it was kind of him to uh, do it at all and, like, you know, make the time. But but that was something I, I specifically um, commissioned him for, and that was something uh, we'd been, like, you know... Uh, sort of waiting for uh, uh, an opening in Harry's schedule for a long time. I, I had wanted to do this for a long time with Harry specifically. I'm a big fan of his animation and um, I budgeted for it and uh, it was a fun project to work on with him. I, um, I, I did essentially um, for the animated intro, I did, uh, like, storyboards. They're very simple, crude, but, like, you know, showed him the idea that I had in mind, where I sort of appear and I run past certain comic book characters and, uh, and then jump forward into frame and, uh, and it sort of pulls back, uh, the camera pulls back to reveal that it's all happening within a comic book. So, um, yeah, uh, that was my idea, and, and Harry executed it to perfection. I love it. I'm very, very fan. Good fan. Do you do mini comics? I uh, don't quite know what you mean. Do you mean do I make mini comics or do I review mini comics? I'm not quite sure about the question. Uh, caught this in time as I haven't seen one of your live streams before. Never had time, but I still love rewatching your usual videos, old and new. Well, thank you, Shane. That's very, very kind of you to say. That. Very kind. Yep, I am live, King of the Stone Age. I am live. Um, you want a video on Umberto Ramos? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's def definitely a possibility. That's always a possibility. Are you using any references, or is this drawing straight from your head? No, I was looking at um some photos of the actors to, to, to get this uh, the way I want it to look. And then um, 
once I go to the ink stage, uh, at that point, it's all sort of freehand. But some of the layout is based on um, reference photos, yeah. So, not trying to say this is like an amazing piece of art. This is really just me drawing something I felt like and having fun familiarizing myself with some inking techniques, trying to get better at like learning when to feather, where to spot blacks, things like that. Hopefully over time I get better. Would I consider doing a video on Shade the Changing Man from the Vertigo days? Yeah, of course I would consider that. Um, yep, that could be a lot of fun. Where did the music come from the animated intro? Great question, Daniel. That was also Harry Partridge. Um, anybody who knows Harry uh, is likely to know that he has quite a bit of musical talent. He, he can sing. He can make music. Uh, he comes from a, a, a family with musical talent and uh, it did not skip a generation or anything. Harry is is quite uh, clever and I told him that like the music that I wanted, I had something in mind. I wanted something that sounded like uh, Outrun or you know sort of like that 80s type of uh, sound and we talked back and forth and he figured something out. Let's see. Um, REIQ, thank you so much for the super chat. Would you rather write or draw a comic? If it's right, what genre would be your ideal? Uh, probably I would rather write one. I've got a lot of uh, things that I've written that I would love to uh, bring into the world. Um, and if I had to do a genre, if I had to pick, I'd probably start with sci-fi. And maybe then, like, uh, if I could get my skills up to, to an area where I felt, like, really comfortable, I would love to try to tackle crime. I think that would be a supreme challenge, but uh, would interest me quite a bit. I think that crime is a tricky one, because you coming up with the mystery element, at least. Because that's sort of what I'd like to do with a crime, is, is have, like, a good mystery to it. I think that that's a big challenge, but that's something that would bring me a lot of pleasure. Who knows? Maybe someday. But to do that, I'd need to hire an artist. Um, I like uh, the idea of, of paying them for their work up front. I did put 7-Eleven into the intro. That's a <laughs> nice catch, uh, John. Yeah, in my new animated intro... There is one character that is not a knockoff, and that is because um, 7-Eleven is in the public domain, and I did an episode on that. Let's see here. Two, two Super Chats in a row. Um, Cristobal says, greetings from Chile. Love you, and I cannot get enough of your videos. You are an amazing person and YouTuber. Great stuff, man. Ah, gracias. That is awesome. Thank you. And then Bane also. Bane! Brain, how much do you get that? Do you get, do you get people talking to you like this? Uh, hope all is going well. I've missed your live streams. They help me relax. Oh, I'm not sure if you remember me, but you gave me some advice about teaching with comics in a past stream. Thank you. Keep doing what you're doing. Much love. Ah, I will keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you so much, both. That's amazing. That you guys have both made me feel really, really good. So thank you. Now I just want to talk like this all night. You get it all the time? I'm sorry. Do you get it done as well as this? Of course you do. Chris is a man of many voices. None of them good, but many voices. <sighs> Let's see. I'm proud to be your Patreon supporter. Your vids are doing... Great work in terms of bringing up obscure parts of comic book history. How's the Berserk reading going? Pretty good. I picked up the second big hardcover volume. Um, so I'm, I'm reading that and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure when I can carve out the time. Because I do know that Berserk and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure are two manga series that um, several people would really like to hear my thoughts on. I, I'm, I'm, I've definitely noted that that's uh, 
something people want. So working on reading it so that I can get as familiar as possible with it. And hopefully, uh, you know, in 2020, uh, one, 2021, I can talk about that. That would be nice. Thank you for being a Patreon supporter. I really appreciate it. Comic Tropes performs his voice impersonations while reading Super Chats. The only voice I like to do is Bane. <laughs> After how good the Joker was in Dark Knight, uh, yeah, the Dark Knight, I was like, there's no way Dark Knight Rises will compare for me. But I'll be honest, I know it's not everybody's favorite. I love Bane in that movie. I, but then again, I like Tom Hardy. I think he's a really good actor. But oh man, his Bane is just, he sounds so unique and so memorable. I thought he was appropriately um, tough and 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 smart, so I liked Bane a lot in that movie. I think that they did that character justice. Bane is a character that like came out relatively close to when I was sort of starting to read the Batman comics. So a few years maybe after I'd been reading them, but like close enough that I I've always had sort of an affection for that villain I, th I think Bane was uh I think Bane is a cool villain a char cool character anyway any experience with IDW lately um really just um Ninja Turtles I like Ninja Turtles a lot I'm um, trying to think if there's anything else I've picked up from IDW but nothing's coming to my mind right now who is your favorite Batman villain um I mean ultimately probably joker but i am also of the opinion that batman should probably have more interesting one-off villains that he truly does you know defeat either through you know rehabilitation or the villain gets their comeuppance by you know something working against them but you know i i like mysteries and i think that like mysteries work best with like you know a new sort of enemy as compared to like you know the Riddler coming back again um, so I do think that Batman should probably have a few more sort of one-off uh, villains that you're almost like oh I wish that guy would come back but but then they don't and that's okay um, but I do yeah the Joker has a lot of uh, a lot of what's good in a in a um, arch enemy because he, he really is sort of the the opposite of Batman in so many ways <sighs> well thank you for the compliment the snark I appreciate that who is your favorite Batman in live action I think it would probably still be um, Christian Bale oh you know what though I'll put Adam West way up there Oh, wow. Hold on. I loved Wayne. I am glad Amazon picked it up. Hoping for season two. Man, me too. Like you, I am a Tom Hardy fanboy. I would watch him play Emma Frost. I bet he nails it. I feel like he can do no wrong. I've never seen Tom Hardy give a bad performance in anything I've seen. I mean, the closest is like, you know, the, the clone he played of, of Picard. But that just wasn't written well. Would you be down to write someone else's idea inspired on 90s anime style involving crimes like Conan, or are you under arrest? Uh, I'm also your patron. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Writing somebody else's idea. Um, I'm never against a collaboration. But my time is, like, so little that, like... It, it, writing just somebody else's idea as work for hire it's like I don't know what I truly bring to the table in that equation you know because I'm not like an established writer if I was an established writer and I could bring a project to a publisher and get it published sure I get it I can see where I'm bringing the value and and like you know if I was charging for that it made sense but otherwise you know 
I'd rather get some of my own ideas out there before I really start doing a big collaboration writing-wise. I'd love to work with other artists. Dr. Pig, yeah. Oh, Venom? Yeah, you know, Venom wasn't great, but I don't blame really too much of that on Tom Hardy. Uh, uh, the writing in that is, is questionable. Like, you know, I don't think that the character is... It's not as good as it could be, but I think Tom Hardy makes it better than it should, than it otherwise would be. I really do believe that. I think Tom Hardy was pretty good in that. You know, he gave the character an interesting sort of accent and way of talking. Uh, he played it. He played it pretty well. Read any weird video game comic adaptations yet? Weird video game ad. Uh, I don't know if I have lately. I know that, like, you know, in the 90s, there were some interesting ones. Uh, I talked once about, like, the uh, Game Boy comics by Valiant. Those were pretty weird. Um, there was also a Doom comic that was just atrocious, honestly. <laughs> like, it's so bad. Uh, but a lot of people have reviewed that Doom comic, so I don't feel like there's really much new that I could bring to the table on something like that. Um weird video game adaptation stuff. Now, I can't think of anything that I've come across lately. Steve Sorensen says, Tom and Capone was bad. Really? He was? I didn't see it. I haven't seen everything Tom Hardy's done, but he was bad in that? That, that I just find it hard to believe. I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I haven't seen it yet. Huh. Missing you. Yeah. Wow. Are there any lockdowns on your state? Um, not exactly a lockdown, but close. Um, I'm in Washington State, and uh, in terms of what they're they're asking us not to, you know, go to friends or family members' houses. They're asking us not to, and I'm 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 following that rule. Um, uh, let's see. Any advice on starting your own graphic novel? Let me come back to that. That's a great question, Bush, and I really appreciate the, the, the super chat. Um, as far as, like, how else things are handled right now, um, they've closed gyms, movie theaters, indoor dining. All of that is, is, is done. So, like, any sort of indoor gatherings, pretty much done with the exception of retail. Uh, but that's at 25% capacity. Grocery stores, stores at the mall... Uh, even where I work selling cars, we can only have 25% of what our, you know, fire marshal mandated capacity uh, was established to be. That's not many. Um, so, yeah, those are our rules. Advice on starting your own graphic novel. Well, a graphic novel, you know, sort of implies... A lot more pages than like you know just a uh, comic book so I would say uh, you got to be patient with something like that be ready to work on something for the long haul uh, as far as writing goes you know I have taught some writing for comics classes uh, back when I lived in um, the DC area I used to teach for the uh, Writers Center um, I helped get a grant uh, so that they could, like, uh, teach a comic book writing class. And um, I would say that, you know, just make sure that you have an interesting conflict that will change your protagonist in some way, or at least change the audience's understanding of the story when they finish it. You know, make sure that there's a conflict that uh, the only way that your character is going to change is by going through that. Um, and, and have a character that's dynamic. Ha they have to have flaws, or at least one really, you know, prominent flaw. As well as, you know, their, their abilities and stuff. They, they can't be idealized. So it's, it's a trick. In England, everything except essential shops is shut. Th that's basically how it is in my state right now. I would say that's basically it. Everything except essential shops. Um, and, you know, you could argue what's essential. I, but, um, yeah, so that's where we are. Favorite Taco Bell order or fast food place? I, I don't love Taco Bell. I'll eat there if, like, 
I don't know what I'd eat there, but I, I'd eat there. I just, it's, I, I wouldn't say that it's my favorite. Um, so if I have to choose there and instead just say fast food, I would say, uh, ideally, you know, I'd probably like a burger, but, um, I also really like, uh, Popeye's chicken. I think that Popeye's is, uh, Popeye's chicken is the shiz knit. I think that that was from an Adam Sandler movie, but it's not coming to me what one that is, but yeah. <laughs> Ireland is finally out of a six-week lockdown today. Wow, that's intense. That's intense. But you know what? Like, I give props to anybody that can, like, sort of obey and do that because I'm sure that it helps everybody. And uh, I would love to get past covid and a lot of people in my country just aren't really cooperating it's tough yeah little nicky that's it not a great movie but there are still some parts that make me laugh i want to be just like you once i grow up chris no i'm sure you'll be better man uh, i'm sure you'll be better preston what is your favorite batman story hmm favorite Batman story if you said Superman there's several that like come to mind Batman is a little trickier um, in the 80s I really did like death in the family when I read it the one where Robin dies and the fans sort of voted on that um, what can I say it, it worked for me uh, at that age anyway and I like I'm a sucker for Jim Apparel art I do like Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller. That would be uh, high on my list. I don't know that Killing Joke is really necessarily high on my list. I, It's an interesting story. It's got great artwork. Love the artwork by Brian Bolland. I don't think the story is one that I really love, it, at least not anymore. I did really like the recent Batman White Knight by Sean Gordon Murphy. I like that a lot. Peru is having trouble. I'm sorry to hear that, Franco. Hello from Brazil. Do you know any artist from here? Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh definitely. Right, Rafael Grandpa is is brilliant. He really is. Um, I would love to talk about his work sometime. And um, what else has Brazil done? Um. I gotta think about it. There's a lot of things that I start to think of, but then I realize they're from Argentina. Um, but but there's plenty of brilliant Brazilian artists. Ever read anything by Corey Lewis? Shark Knife. Yes, yes. Not in a while. I don't know if Corey Lewis has put anything out yet, but I read um, Ray and Shark Knife. Just a really cool vibe from that guy's stuff. Definitely like respect his unique singular approach definitely like him definitely like him a lot let's see Diodato I'm not a huge fan of Mike Diodato not Have you checked out Al Columbia's newish book? No, what, what's he doing? Al Columbia's a, a fascinating guy. He's, I don't know that I like... I, I respect his work. I don't know what to think of him as a person. He's 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 an artist. He's, he's out there, man. Whenever I hear about Al Columbia, I, even though it's really old at this point, I can't help but think of... What might have been if he had continued uh, Big Numbers with Alan Moore? I just really would have liked to have seen Big Numbers completed. That was a fascinating idea. If you're not familiar, Big Numbers was a uh, comic by Alan Moore and Bill Sienkiewicz that was going to follow the impact on a small English town as a massive mall gets built there. Um, it's an interesting idea, and I love anything by Bill Sienkiewicz. So, uh, yeah, it was very, very artistic. There were a lot of things. Umbrella Academy artist is from Brazil. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Have I seen Gabriel Rodriguez artwork on Lock and Key? Oh yeah, of course. I did an episode on Lock and Key. It's one of my all-time favorite, like what I would consider horror comics. I think it's fantastic. It's just fantastic. I said a bad word? Yeah, I might have. I, I haven't been censoring myself right now. Seed Hill from Scotland's here. You loved big numbers. There's a lot to love there. So the first, only uh, two issues were published. Only two out of a planned 12. The third issue you can see online, but it was not actually published. But the artwork was finished, and you can see the third issue. Supposedly, Al Columbia completed issue four, and then didn't like the experience of working with Tundra Publishing and destroyed all the all the pages for issue four. Dead Space did a comic, yeah. Who are Wayne and Dell? Characters from a show I like called Wayne, appropriately enough. It's about like these uh, awesome uh, young teenagers from Brockton, Massachusetts, which is a town Oh, maybe like 15 to 20 minutes from where I grew up in Massachusetts. Definitely a little tougher than the town I grew up in. Mine was more of like a quieter fishing village type place. Whereas Brockton's sort of a uh, industrial, but like, you know, definitely like very working class. Um, and, uh, and these kids go on like, you know, a... Uh, a road trip down to Florida to get back Wayne's car that his late father had left for him. Um, it's funny and it's violent. And several episodes were written by the team that brought you movies like uh, Zombieland and Deadpool. So if you liked either of those, you'll like Wayne. 2008 would be a would be cool to do great documentary on prime yeah 2000 ad is is the is the best it's, it's awesome fishing village that's my sister she's there i mean at one point anyway it was probably not so much now but that originally that's what that's what my uh, hometown was she's laughing because it's not really anymore i mean there are fishermen there but it's not really anymore um, it's more just like, you know, a place for people to commute to Boston. The Suburbs. Ed Brubaker episode. What, you watched my Ed Brubaker episode? Is that what you're saying? I love Ed Brubaker. Like, no question, one of my favorite writers in comics does some of the best crime stories in any medium and he happens to do them in comics i love what he and sean phillips do together they, they, what a team what a team what an iconic team they have become <sighs> i am planning my first comics in my language good always love to hear about people being uh, creative and, and going for what they're passionate about just don't try to chase a trend. Just do what you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about it, bet you anything somebody else is passionate about it and they will share your love and passion. They will respond to uh, something that people put their heart into. I, I believe that. Brockton, the city of champions. Brockton. Yep. They they I'll tell you, the two kids that they got to play Wayne and Dell on that are incredible. Like their accents are so good. Neither of them are from Massachusetts, but their accents are so well done. I hate a bad Massachusetts accent. Drives me wicked bonkers. How did you get the job for the comic you just lettered? Um, Daniel 
knew that I'd lettered stuff before. I don't know how. I must have mentioned it either on my show or on Twitter or something like that. So uh, Daniel's the writer of the comic Locksaw, and he just reached out and offered a paying gig. And I was like, sounds like a fun comic. He, he showed me some art that he'd already gotten, and he hired some really talented artists. The idea sounded fun. It was a paying job. Like, why wouldn't I take it, you know? Uh, I was happy to work on that thing. Um, it's a great comic. It's really fun. I recommend it. You can find it um, on Amazon. That's one of the easiest ways to get it. L-A-U-X-O-R. Loxor. It's about uh, a planet full of robots that should be able to, you know, change into vehicles and stuff. But for some reason they can't. And so uh, somebody in the government like hires uh, Loxor is like a uh, private detective robot, and uh, he's hired to figure out the mystery of why uh, why the robots can't change anymore. Pretty cool. I think anybody out there would like definitely find it funny, action packed, great art, lettering's fine. It's unobtrusive. <laughs> That's the trick when you letter. You just don't want to have it called attention to. You want to make it just easy to, to guide the reader. You're supposed to go from like, you know, this part of the panel to that part of the panel. It's clear that this tail goes to this character, you know, like just really just clear and otherwise just not noticeable. Are you familiar with the book Dead Rabbit by Jerry Duggan that was canceled last year? No, you know, I'm, I guess I'm not, but I do like Jerry Duggan's work. So I, I, I'm surprised I missed that one. Uh, do I like Neil Gaiman's run on Sandman? Yeah, that would probably be a good topic someday to cover. Have I read the first half of the Sekiro manga? I haven't even heard of it, so no, I haven't read the first or the second half or any half. Uh, that one is uh, not one that I am familiar with, I'm afraid. Any interesting discoveries lately? Indie comics. Let me think. Um, not discoveries, but I picked up the uh, huge compilation of Berlin by Jason Lutz. That's really good. That's a good one. What do you think of Dan Slott? Um, yeah, I know that Dan Slott's a little uh, controversial and that some people don't really care for... Um, his comics and some people do um everything i've read by him i've, I've enjoyed i liked his work on she hulk and i liked his um stuff on spider-man i really liked the um superior spider-man story arc um i thought that that was really cool uh i thought he had some good ideas there so uh i i tend to like dan slot's writing i wouldn't say that i've read everything that he's put out type of thing or you know followed him to to that close of an extent, but um, I like what I've read by him. Are you familiar with the manga mangaka Takehiko Inoue? Uh, yes, I've heard of Vagabond. Um, I've flipped through it and the art looks incredible, but I haven't read it yet. Oh, canceled for copyright reasons. That's that's weird. Oh, I've definitely read Mouse, uh, Eric. Yeah, Mouse is Mouse is a classic. I think everybody should read it. it uh, it's a, it's quite an impressive story. I think it's still the only comic that's ever run won the uh, Pulitzer. So, yeah. Favorite thing I've read lately? Um, One thing that's up there is Kent State by Durf Backdurf. That's, you know, it's real life. And I think it was told very clearly and, uh, and emotionally powerfully uh, in comics. So, yeah, Kent State was, was 
really good. That that was one that stood out. Do I have a strong opinion about piracy of comics? Yeah, I definitely think that stealing is wrong. Uh, period. I don't think that, like, you know... I think uh, it's damaging to the uh, field of comics. If people aren't buying the comics, that just raises the price. I think if uh, people aren't searching for back issues because they can just pirate them, it takes the fun out of the hunt and the search, the pride of ownership of getting something that you're really passionate about. And, uh, yeah, I just think that it's a... Uh, I don't agree with it. Are you going to color this? I was thinking about it, Chrissy. I was thinking about it. Did you have an opinion on that? So stealing is bad? Yeah, stealing is pretty bad. What am I eating? Skittles. Just a few. I'm really tired, so I'm using a little bit of sugar to keep myself awake. Pirates are thieves. Yeah. Vagabond is hard to follow at times? That's interesting. Yeah, I haven't read it yet, so I wouldn't have a, a strong opinion there. Well, thanks for the uh, suggestions earlier on, like, you know, who you'd be curious about seeing me uh, interview. That That's really helpful stuff. Skittles Mukbang! There you go. Now that's how I need to title this. I'll just title it Skittles Mukbang and it'll get like a ton of views. Oh wow, a super chat. What did you think of Alex Ross's comments about how his Kingdom Come work was being used for the CW and not being compensated? I didn't hear about it on the Word Balloons podcast, but I did see him mention that on Twitter. I think it was specifically um, that new show Stargirl. When that came out, they very clearly based photos of characters on his drawings from or paintings from JSA I would say legally DC probably can get away with it it was work for hire if they're going to create a derivative photo based on you know art that they paid for I think that they're allowed to do that legally is he entitled to money from it? Monetary compensation? I would even argue that. Maybe not. But I think that they should have at least given him a credit. I think morally that that was the least they could do and should do. They should have given him a, a credit. So that was not awesome. See ya, Road Jaws. Well... You say DC has screwed over so many people over the years. I'd say, you know, what entertainment company hasn't? And it's like, it's hard to get mad at a company. Um, a business isn't a person. It isn't just one person guiding it. And so a business is only in existence to make money. 
its only responsibility is like you know a fiduciary one to the stakeholders involved to get them back money um so to stay moral you just have to constantly elect good leadership um it's hard to get mad at a company you can get mad at people for individual decisions when you hear about it but it's tricky Bray Fogel said he was paid for creating Anarchy, who appeared in a video game and Arrow on CW. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice that he got that. Have you ever thought of getting a job as an artist? Not really. I think I'm too slow. Look at how long it's taken me just to sketch this out tonight. Uh, so no, I've never really given that much thought. I love drawing. I love graphic design as well. And um, when the opportunities present themselves, you know, I do try to take uh, advantage of that. I'll do like, you know, a freelance drawing here or there. Um, this year I, I did a, a page in a kickstarted comic called uh, Death and Comics, and I did some lettering in Loxor. So I had some published work this year. I just, you know, I'm just not good enough to, to draw all the time. Uh, I'm going to head out. Well, thank you for the super chat here. Keep going strong there, buddy. Will do. I love you, man. Fun fact, Chile is a long country. The length of all of Europe, in fact. Love you. Very cool. I'd love to visit Chile. There's, I'd love to visit almost almost every country in uh, South America, but um, the ones towards the top of my list would be Peru, because I'd love to see Machu Picchu. I'd love to go to the huge CCXP Comic Con in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I might like to see Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. I'd love to go to Argentina and Chile for the food. There's a lot of places I'd love to go. Is Hickman's East of West any good? It's quite good. If you like apocalyptic sci-fi westerns, that's what it is. It's apocalyptic, it's sci-fi, and it's a western. I have not done a video on Jack Davis. It would be an interesting potential topic to discuss his work. He was great. He was great. I don't think I did an episode on Micronauts, Eric. I mean, I may have mentioned them related to something else, but I don't think I've... I haven't personally done an episode about just the Micronauts. Who do you think is the nicest person in comics? Somebody that just strikes you as being a nice person. I wonder. Glad you liked the recent episode, Jay. Thank you very much. Do you think that comics reached a peak in the 60s as far as things such as excitement, sophistication, unique and talented artists, and affordability? No. You know, I think the best is still to come. I think that um, I think that the only thing about comics is that too many people think superheroes when they think comics, when they should just be thinking comics is an artistic medium. There's so much more we can do aside from superheroes. Superheroes are fun, but they're also sort of for kids doesn't mean that other people can't enjoy them. I still enjoy the occasional superhero comic. But superheroes are wish fulfillment. Um, I think that... Uh, I think that comics would best be served by people understanding that superheroes 
should probably be aimed at, you know, like 13 year olds, potentially enjoyed by older people, but like, you know, but they should probably just be made at, aimed at like 13 year olds at the starting point. And then, um, tell other types of stories for, for other audiences, tell nonfiction, tell crime, tell sci-fi, have Westerns, have, have every sort of genre under the sun, have superhero stories that adults can appreciate, but don't aim them at adults as your starting point or age with them. I look at a character like Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn was created um, for the Batman animated TV series in the 90s. That was an amazing version of Batman. That was a great, great show and a great distillation of Batman. And it was aimed at kids. And adults could appreciate it because it had emotional depth and it was fun and it was just well done with interesting characters, but it was for kids. And Harley Quinn was created on a show for kids. And what has DC done with Harley Quinn in the last three to four years? She's been in several R-rated movies. She's got an animated show on HBO that's also R-rated. It's like, what's the point? Like, why... Why create a brand? Like, DC created a brand from the 30s through about the 80s. Like, about 50 years of, like, kids' comics, right? Like, good kids' comics. Superman. Batman, Wonder Woman, Flash, Green Lantern, aimed at kids. And then now we've got like Zack Snyder stuff, which can be interesting, but it's like, does it really make sense to throw away like 50 years worth of work building something aimed at a certain audience just to be like, well, let's see what it would be like for adults. I say, well, wait a minute, like, one of the reasons Watchmen is so great is because it uses analog characters when it tries to deconstruct superheroes. It didn't use the Charlton characters or certainly the DC superheroes. I don't think it would have been as strong if it had used the the real superhero characters and told such a, a graphic adult story. It wouldn't have it wouldn't have worked the same. It wouldn't. And so you look at it and you're like yeah, maybe superheroes would work better as sort of an all-ages story instead of trying to tell gritty, mature things. And yeah, here and there you're going to have an idea like, well, what if a superhero was like, you know, written for, you know, the real world or something. And, and I like The Boys, for instance, like the TV show I'm talking about. I like that. I like the Deadpool movies. So you can do it sometimes, but I think it's a waste of your intellectual property and your branding to make comic books and use your characters aimed at older audience members. I think it's a waste. I think it's, I think it prevents you from getting new readers. I think it's a way to like become irrelevant over time to lose your audience and, and 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 that's what comics superhero comics are doing what about dark knight returns or injustice like i say if a creator has a really good idea do it but both of those are sort of told as um not in the main continuity right whereas people will definitely think of like a movie as like you know the mainstream adaptation and and you know we'll like read like the modern comics and I don't know. It it feels very short-sighted to me that comic books do so many superhero stories that are not aimed at kids now because com superheroes are silly. Like no matter how we cut it, like they're all silly. They 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 get magic powers and they always put on like, you know, tights. Give themselves their own nickname. And go out and break the law like, you know, fighting crime. I mean, that's really silly when you think about it. No one could do that in the real world. It doesn't work. It doesn't. And, um, but it's okay within its own world. You just sort of like in that heightened reality, 
you know, Superman can be awesome. I love so many superhero Superman stories, but I don't want to see Superman and Batman trying to kill each other in like Dawn of Justice. I think that that's such a bad movie. Um, and I don't understand the point of it. I don't understand. I'm. It's very late, and I'm having trouble like. Uh, uh, making my points as clearly as I want. All I can say is, like, there are good stories with superheroes for adults. I'm not saying that there's not. Um, but also, uh, it's short-sighted to move it in that direction overall. It's short-sighted. You lose your audience. Any artist you would like to see create a story for Batman Black and White? I'd like to see Daniel Warren Johnson. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. <laughs> Just about everybody. I'd love to see everybody's interpretation of Batman uh, with no real uh, rules holding them back. I hope I didn't sound too uh, grouchy just then. I just feel like um, there's so much you can do with comics, and it's it's sad to see so many people pin their hopes on um, superhero comics growing up with adults. I, I I don't think I don't think that's the way of the future. But I do think no matter what, comics as a medium are here to stay. There will always be comics. I'm not worried about that. Um, I'm just concerned about, you know, the idea of uh, superheroes being marketed to, to adults. Besides Akira Ghost in the Shell, what would you recommend in the way of cyberpunk? Hmm... Geez, all my ideas sort of go towards movies and books as compared to comics. That's interesting, isn't it? Does anybody out there think of, like, uh, certain comics when they think of uh, um, cyberpunk? Because I'll be honest, I'm thinking of things like Neuromancer and Blade Runner as compared to thinking of a comic. It's a tough question, Horizon. Didn't expect it to be, but it is. What do you think the future of comic books... What do you think is the future of comic book superheroes? Um, just going back to basics, you know, you see something like All Star Superman from like, uh, uh what? That's got to be like almost fifteen years ago or something at this point. But that was like a perfect, fun, silly version of Superman that was so well done. Was totally appropriate for all ages, including adults. You can definitely appreciate it. Comics like that that just don't rely on decades of continuity just rely on a good story Transmetropolitan yeah that sort of takes place in a world that's arguably cyberpunk I can see that I can see that you know what I need and I don't have is my ruler so that I can make some straight lines for these houses. Frustrating. What do you think of Why the Last Man? I love Why the Last Man, but I don't think I've ever been disappointed by Brian K. Vaughn. 
So uh, yeah, that's a it's a great book. Very sad, in a way. But what book wouldn't be when you're sort of talking about potential end of the world and science gone wrong? So that makes sense. How was your Thanksgiving? Nothing too fancy. It was really just uh, my fiance and I. But fortunately, she cooked us some wonderful food. Very grateful for that. And uh, yeah, so we had a good time together. Um, I already have Thursdays off. That's just the day I take off work. So I worked the day before, I worked the day after. And you know, so it wasn't really much of anything for me other than just, you know, having some good food with. Uh, with my love but I uh, can't complain you know we got to eat well we're we're here we're healthy so uh, I'm grateful for that and hopefully next year I can uh, do it with family that would be awesome Have you read any old comics from the Soviet Union? No, I would love to. I would be utterly fascinated to know what kind of comics they make in Russia. I have always been curious about that. I would love to see some comic books from Russia. Um, you know, I mean, I've seen Chinese and Japanese comics. I've seen comics from Africa. I've seen comics from South America. You know, I've seen... But I've never seen... That would be a real peek behind the Iron Curtain. I mean, that's a pretty dated term at this point. But, you know, it, it, that, that feeling is still there. I mean, it's, I, would, I would really be fascinated to know what comic books they make in Russia. Um, I don't feel like I've ever heard of, like, a Russian artist crossing over to the Western audience. I would, I would really be fascinated what what they like over there, what their storytelling is like, how their tropes essentially compare and contrast with our own. If I got big enough and I could do this full time, would you add more shows to the channel? Well, I do more co types of content. I would pr probably do more interviews and I would probably do more, um, like if I could sort of essentially like hire a cameraman or something, you know, I would probably visit and interview, you know, comic book stores and publishers, like, you know, even in other countries, for instance, that's something I think I would really love to do. And I would probably like, you know, have guests on and, and talk about maybe comic book movies. Those are things if I could do this full time, and I could sort of hire a crew to do the more the editing and the camera work, and I could just focus on developing the content. Those are the kinds of things I'd want to do. Thoughts on Alex Toth? He's one of my favorites. Just just a brilliant, brilliant artist that made it look easy. <laughs> it it's it's not easy, but he makes it look easy. Um, there's a simplicity, an elegance to Alex Toth's work, and uh, very few can actually duplicate that. Some but not many. <sighs> yeah, a god, says Datsun, and that's so true. Doesn't it bring out the true character and humanity the superhero has when faced with real choices, going through real events, real problem and conflicts? Uh, don't quite understand everything you're saying there, Lone Star. Sorry, I'm trying to, but I don't quite, can't quite parse that. Did I like the work Harry did with my intro? I loved it. I adored it. It's it's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, but you know that was a very close collaboration, and uh, the reason I hired him is because he's so talented. I I knew that he would produce 
something that I would like. And I hope others do. It seems like it is getting a fantastic response. Um, I have no complaints. No, I love it. I, I think it's wonderful. I think Harry is a fantastic animator that can really go far. And you know, he's planning on doing um, some of his own comics in the, uh, in the near future, as well as um, continuing his animated work. Um, and I think that he could do some great work in comics, because obviously he's a talented artist and knows how to convey motion and emotion. So, um, can't wait to see what he comes up with. Let's see here, what else? The new intro is great. Thanks, Andrew. In honor of Elliot Page, any favorite trans creators in comics? That's a good question, Rebel. Um, and I have to admit that I'm not overly familiar with a wide variety of trans creators. Um, although, you know, of course, there's only so many trans people within the population, so maybe that's normal. Um, I've read some of the work of... Um, Magdalene Visaggio, and I think it's quite good, um, but that's about the only one that I'm familiar with, you know? Maybe that's my oversight. Um, I'm always looking for good recommendations, though, so if somebody had a recommendation of a creator who happened to be trans, uh, I'd definitely give it a look. Ever heard of Night on the Galactic Railroad, a Japanese novel with themes of religion, death, and lots of introspection? No. Cool title, though. Man, that sounds badass. What's your favorite superhero, Chris? I suppose overall, um, Spider-Man. Yeah. Spidey's probably my favorite. Anybody else thinking of getting a HBO Max so that they can see the uh, Wonder Woman movie on Christmas? I have to admit, I'm giving it some thought, but that's also because I, it looks like HBO Max has some good content. I like things like Doctor Who and Rick and Morty, and that's on there as well. So I was like, oh, well, you know, seems kind of cool. I want to see the, the Wonder Woman movie. I, I thought that the first one was pretty darn good. video on Vince Collette inspired me to work more on my inks and what not to do. I also really liked your lettering on that comic you were plugging. Well, thank you, Jake. That's really kind of you. That's really kind of you. Julia K is a great trans cartoonist to follow. Okay, Julia K. Try to remember that. I'm trying to get my little brother into comic books. He is 11. Specifically, superhero comics. Where should I start? All-Star Superman. All-Star Superman, definitely. Um, what else? Um, what else? I mean, I think that there's a lot of uh, classic Spider-Man, Batman stories at this point. So, I don't think that should be an especially hard thing to crack if you just go to a comic book store and see what's available.
Bonsoir. Super Sons. Yeah, that's a more recent Superman uh, story, right? Bonsoir. Since there are people from several uh, countries right now, I'm curious. Who out there speaks the most fluent languages? I only speak English fluently. I know just enough Spanish to sometimes muddle through certain things. Not very good at that. Um, I'm learning Japanese pretty bad at it, but can start to at least read, know like the basic phrases for how to get around and be polite. Um, but like I'm curious like who out there maybe can like speak fluently uh, another couple languages or something I'm always curious to, to know what people know have I ever thought about starting a podcast well you know I actually used to do one for like about seven or eight years uh, it was called television zombies and I just talked about various genre TV shows of the day with my uh, friends and then we also uh, or I would specifically I have a segment in there where I would interview the various, you know, writers, actors, directors, etc. that like worked on those TV shows. Um, interviewed quite a few famous people and that was fun. Um, but I eventually got sort of burned out and I wanted to talk about something that I was a little more passionate about, which was comics. And I don't really think I need to do a podcast about it since I'm pretty busy doing YouTube about it. Um, don't have much more that I need to say on like a podcast than what I say you know on the on the show that I make um, but I have had some interest in potentially starting a podcast that I'd still probably issue through YouTube um, where I talk about franchise uh, movies like talk about every movie in a franchise so I might do that at some point I spoke four languages fluently when I was a teenager. That's amazing, Daniel. Native in Urdu can speak English fluently. Wow. Wow. I'm living in Osaka and can get by okay reading and speaking. Still a long way to go. Um, I'd recommend going through Genki 1 and 2 and the workbooks for Japanese training. Um, I have them, so I might. Yeah. French and English. That's great. Spanish and Russian is all I know besides English. That's amazing. I've said this before that like there was this character. Uh, no, he's still actually in the comics. For a while he wasn't. But there's a there's one of the uh, X-Men characters. He, he was introduced in New Mutants. Doug Ramsey. Codename Cypher. He has this amazing ability. The ability to intuitively figure out how to read and speak any language. And I just thought, like, my God, could you imagine in real life how freeing that would be to be able to travel anywhere in the world and easily speak to the locals? Wow, what a, what a, what a treat, what an absolute privilege and pleasure something like that would be. Just amazing. Always fascinated me. That idea always fascinated me. Truly a superpower I would love to have. And maybe some of what appeals to me is I honestly feel like uh, uh, speaking another language has never come easily to me. I find it very difficult. Um, I've, I've studied Latin, Spanish, and Japanese, and I don't find any of it very easy. I find it very uh, hard to rewire my brain to think in another language. I find that very, 
very difficult, but I want to. I, I want to speak in other languages. Talk about the kind of thing that, like, if I had a genie in a lamp and, I, and he would grant me some wishes, there's something I might wish for, the ability to speak every language fluently. I think that would be amazing. Now, if I got the wish master who turns my wishes evil, I don't know what he would do to me in a scenario like that. I don't know. Do you draw every day? I probably go doodle every day. The lanterns would have a universal translator in their ring. Yeah, exactly. How cool would that be? How cool. Wishmaster would make you mute, deaf, and blind? Well, then how would I be able to speak fluently if he did that to me? I don't know. I can ask the way to the tram stop in German. There you go. So Chris would like to be a universal translator. Yeah, I'd love it. Any character you love the design of, but personality you hate? Hmm. Maybe. Um. Hmm. Probably just don't read, like, a comic book like that, though, to be honest. I haven't watched Utopia. I heard somebody say uh, a friend wa watched it and they liked it quite a bit. But no, I haven't seen it. I don't know. I don't know much about it. Let's see. I would like love. I'd love to color this, but I'm not sure if I actually have any flesh tones. Maybe this one. Fruit pink. Just sort of do a little. It's kind of, kind of bright. Hmm. I might not really be able to color this. I you know what? I could do it in like uh, just sort of uh, these golden age funny readings. Um. Yeah, you know, I came close. Uh, the last episode started as me researching silly golden age characters. And then I just sort of obviously went in a different direction because I just became fascinated with the idea of how so many comics in that golden age were being used as um, propaganda. And it just sort of took me down a, a different path. It's awesome that you're so chill and open when it comes to your videos. Well, thanks. Just can only be... What I do? What are you hoping to get from your fiance for Christmas? I hadn't thought about it a whole lot yet, actually. It's kind of a good question, but I'm not sure if I know what I really want for Christmas all that much. You know, I mean, I don't really need anything, I don't think. There's some comics or games that I'd enjoy, art supplies, you know, I'd love more Copic markers. <laughs> I could use Flesh Tone. Um, I don't know. How about uh, any of you out there? Is there anything you're really hoping you'll get for Christmas? I hadn't given it much thought. Maybe one of your ideas will inspire me and I'll be like, that's what I need. I don't know.
Gotham by Gaslight. I've got that. It's good. Streets of Rage 4. I hope to get inspiration to finally draw my comic. And if you're going to wait for inspiration, let me just say, you'll never get it done. Better to just force yourself to do it, and trust me, it'll come out better than you fear. Maybe not as great as you hope, but it's the only way to get it done. They made a Lego set with more pieces than the Millennium Falcon. Yes, the uh, Roman Colosseum. A new phone. Ooh. I'd quite like a COVID vaccine. Man, I'll take that over anything else. Absolutely. I agree with you there, Seed Hill. A new desk and chair, sure. I just moved a few days ago, all right, yep. New clothes, yeah. A spinner rack and chair. Spinner racks are cool. Spinner racks are very cool. What was the biggest roadblock for you in your art career? Well, I mean, I don't really feel like I've got an art career, so I guess the biggest roadblock is maybe my slowness, that that sort of prevents me from <laughs> being a professional. Uh, that's the best I can do right now anyway, because, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm not a working artist that makes his living off of his art. I make my living off of selling cars and then I also happen to do YouTube which gives me a a little bit of extra money too but you know yeah it's, it's, I don't I don't make my living drawing <laughs> who is the worst comic book artist in your opinion worst It's hard to say, you know, I try not to necessarily think in such negative terms. I mean, the worst would have to be somebody that started out bad and never got any better. Um, but beauty's in the eye of the beholder. So, you know, anyone I say, somebody else could just come along and go like, oh, their art does appeal to me. And I'd be like, okay, then I guess I'm wrong. <laughs> so, I don't know, you know, there's artists that I don't get excited by it. I would say that like honestly like artists that bore me enough that I can't really remember their art are less interesting to me than artists that I actively dislike because if I dislike it at least I have some level of engagement like you know I, am I a big fan of Rob Liefeld anymore not really but I did like him when I was like you know 13 14 um I get what's attractive about his art. I'm disappointed he didn't get better, but at the same time, at least I'm showing some level of interest in what he puts out as compared to there's plenty of artists out there that I completely forget about them. So it's really hard. That, that That's really tough to come up with like who I think is the worst. I I also think that like just as, as, as who I am, I just try not to think in those sort of negative terms and... and like, oh, this is the worst. There are things I don't like. Sometimes I talk about them on the show. But I talk about them because I'm like, you know what? We can learn from this. We, I can say this isn't well done for this reason. And by acknowledging that, hey, maybe the rest of us won't fall into that trap or pitfall in the future. So there's something to be learned there. Did you sell any cars? 
Did you say selling cards or cars? Cars, vehicles, SUVs, pickup trucks, sedans, that stuff. Who's your favorite Spider-Man artist? I think I probably have to give the credit to, like, Ditko for creating everything important about Spider-Man, including the way he sort of moves and just how cool he looks and unique. But there are others that are way up there. Um, I would say that Stuart Eminen is way up there. Um, I always really liked Eric Larson's uh, Spider-Man. Mike Zeck has done some one of my favorite all-time uh, Spider-Man stories, Craven's Last Hunt. Boy, he was good on that. Um, so there's a lot of different artists that I really admire that have tackled Spider-Man at one time or another. You know, uh, there's Gil Kane did some great Spider-Man stuff. John Romita Sr. and Jr. have both done Spider-Man things that I really, really admire. So, it's hard. That that I'd never, I'd have a hard time, honestly, even like ranking my top ten in any definitive order because it could change on any given day. Do you have a preferred method for one-time donations? Um, I think it doesn't really matter. Like super chats are great, and coffee is great. I think I get a little bit less taken away on coffee. It doesn't really matter to me. I, you know, I, most most of those one-time things go to me. So I'm always super grateful when when something like that surprises me. Who is your favorite movie Spider-Man? Um, that's harder. It, it's definitely between um, Tobey Maguire and uh, uh, Tom Holland. I think that Tobey Maguire did a great job being Peter Parker. He did some funny quips as Spider-Man. I don't think that those movies gave him as many funny quips, whereas the current ones do. Um. Mm, that's hard. Tobey Maguire's is a little, I think, closer to the comics because we get his, you know, his origin and more interactions with his main cast, whereas the MCU Spider-Man sort of interacts with the the rest of the Marvel universe. I'll give it to to Tom Holland, but barely. What about Andrew? I love Andrew Garfield as an actor. He's been in a lot of great movies. I didn't really buy him as Spider-Man. I thought he was a little too cool. But maybe that works for some people. I'm not saying he's a bad actor. It just didn't really work for me. The guy from the electric company, huh? <laughs> I'll probably be wrapping this up uh, shortly because I just realized that it is getting late for me, which means it's probably getting late for everybody. Um, but I'm very grateful for the company. I'm grateful for the questions and I'm grateful for the super chats. Like people were very kind tonight. Um, I love interacting with all of you because like 99 times out of 100, it's everybody is very polite and respectful of everybody else's viewpoints and just wants to sort of talk about what different aspects of comics excite them uh, and interest them so I have a lot of respect for that uh, I, I'm really grateful that so many clever people are showing up thank you very much people um, means a lot to me and if you haven't seen Wayne, I definitely recommend it. I think it's a really cool, funny show. I really think you'll like it. Uh, so that's my recommendation for today is watch Wayne. It's only uh, 10 episodes. They're each about 30 minutes. So it's a pretty fast watch, honestly. Um, you may want to intentionally pace yourself so that you don't get finished with it too quickly because boy is it good and once you're done 
you know they haven't made a second season hopefully they will but uh so far that, that it's just the one season so you're gonna go through it pretty fast Wow, thanks, Chris Sears. That's so nice of you. I hope I never get used to getting Super Chats, folks. You have no idea. Well, maybe some of you do. It's such a pleasant surprise. It really is to, to think like, wow, somebody enjoyed what I did enough to donate some actual money. That it's It's always flattering. It really is. It's always a genuine, pleasant surprise. And, um... All I can say is I, I really do try to do the best I can on the show and c to come up with interesting topics and an interesting way of presenting them. Um, and uh, I've got I've got so many ideas. I'll never run out of ideas. I promise you that. Thanks to you. Very interesting. Do you do commissions? I usually don't have time to do commissions. Um, if I ever do have time, I'll announce it, but I really, you know, I just don't have much time. Like I said, I don't have time to play video games. I don't have time to do much else. All I do is I'm either at work, or I'm making, you know, comic tropes, or I'm sleeping these days. Um, I know I used to put out more episodes, like, you know, like, every single week for like several years and then this year that slowed down to closer to like once every two weeks thank you Gary McKay that's really really appreciated um I figured out it out and I may have mentioned this in like I don't think I mentioned it in a um in a comic tropes video I may have mentioned it in a previous live stream um so I found out that like what did I you know I was like why did I used to put out more videos than I'm currently capable of because I'm I'm always working like why am I not able to and I figured it out um it's a little dark but basically I uh I think almost all of you know I suffer from depression I I've got it under control but it definitely exhausts me okay so I'm always tired from that and I also had mono several years back that always stays with you unfortunately if you get mono it's a virus that stays in your system and always makes you tired you combine those two things depression and uh, the Epstein-Barr virus I'm always tired not fun so what did I do to combat it I used to drink Mountain Dew several times a day to give myself caffeine boosts and so basically I would come home from work and even though I was totally tired I chugged down a Mountain Dew and it would perk me up and I would write and edit and create a comic tropes episode so that I always had one ready every week. I'd be staying up till three or four in the morning several nights a week doing that. And uh, that was bad for my body. That was a lot of empty calories. Thank you, D. Thank you for the super chat. So I was drinking all that Mountain Dew all the time. It was really bad. And I finally said, you know what? Like, this is... This is hurting my body in a big way. I got to I got to just stop. I just got to go cold turkey and get off caffeine cuz I've been addicted to caffeine on and off for like my whole life. And I just said I got to just cut it out. Like I just can't do it. Cuz it was so many it was it was yeah, it was really bad for my body. And so I've cut out caffeine and so now when I come home I just sometimes do not have the energy to stay physically awake long enough to work for more than one to two hours a night, whereas I used to work for like five to six hours a night. You know, whatever it took, I'd just be up as late as I needed to be. And, you know, if I was tired in the morning, I'd just have more caffeine. Uh, it just wasn't good for my body. I had to stop it. I had to. Uh, I hope you can understand that. I, I know it might be frustrating that I don't put out an episode every week. 
I wish I could. I physically can't. I, I All I can say is I'm putting them out as, as often as I can. I'm trying to do the best I can there. I just had to balance that against my own health. And so that's that's basically what's up. Hopefully that makes sense. Drink green tea. Well, here's the problem. People have suggested that to me a lot. Take just caffeine pill. Take tea. Tea's healthy. My problem is I have a sincere, strong addiction to caffeine, okay? So, yeah, if I was drinking green tea, not too bad for my body, uh, would work well for a while, quite a while. There's going to be a day where, for whatever reason, because I've been on and off of this for, for my whole life now, there's going to be a day, because I've done it, where I can't get the green tea. For whatever reason, oops, forgot to buy enough. Can't find it at work or whatever. I don't have tea at work. but And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be getting a migraine because I don't have the caffeine. And I'm going to have just like a moment of weakness where I go, eh, the hell with it. I'll have one Mountain Dew or I'll have one Starbucks you know, like mocha. And uh, I wish I could say I'm strong enough to just say, like, I go through a day without it or I won't go back and, like, have that Mountain Dew or that Starbucks or something, but I know myself. And unfortunately, if I if I get addicted to the caffeine, I will have one of those days where I go back to one of those drinks. And as soon as I do, I can't stop. I just can't. It's, I crave it. That's who I am. Um, I wish I didn't, but I do. And so that's like uh, why I can't really, um, I just can't do caffeine. I, I just can't, I always want more. That's the other thing. I, I It's like, I because I always feel tired. So if I start feeling that tiredness, it feels so bad that I'm like, oh, I got to have more. I got to have more caffeine and I just can never get enough. It's better to just sort of like feel the exhaustion, fight it as much as I can. Like right now, I I could have fallen asleep for the night like hours ago, but I wanted to do something productive. So I'm, you get started on a project, and I can do it for a little while, you know, and that's good. Oh, thank you for the super chat. Been binging your videos while drawing my comic this year. It's really inspiring, and your interview's amazing. Thanks, Chris. Well, thank you. Uh, Elias, I, I really appreciate that, um, and I hope to do more interviews. I, I gotta think of, uh, some more fascinating creators to, to reach out to, um, and I've been doing, so far, I just realized, like, just all writers, so it's time that I spoke with some more, uh, guys like artists, and letterers, and inkers, and colorists, and editors, so there's a lot of people I'd love to get their opinions on things there's a lot of people out there that i'd love to talk to so hopefully that's something that can continue to happen throughout 2021 um, i'll do my best whoa guillaume says do you know the european comic writer jean van hammer writer of 13 or x3 I, I i don't know how you pronounce that to be honest largo winch and thorgal Recently, Thorgal and its amazing pacifist Conan. I know the title X I I I. I don't know if it's pronounced thirteen or not. Um, I've read a little bit of that. Um, I haven't read the other stuff though, so that that's something I'll keep in the back of my mind. An interview with Ryan Otley. Yeah, I could probably uh, look into that. Um, Ryan and I know each other, so I could do that. I recently stopped smoking cold turkey the day I learned I had cancer. Oh my gosh, I'm in chemo now and it's not lung cancer. Good luck, Robert. Good luck. We all we all want the best for you. My closest friend has BPD and other things. She's really the only person that knows more than 20% of me. Our brains are on another level. Too much self-awareness is a bad thing. Hmm. Well, I always appreciate getting some uh, nice recommendations from uh, everybody. So I, trust me, uh, it does not go unnoticed. Um, I think I'm going to call it 
there. I think that I, uh, I need to get some sleep. It looks like I've been going not quite two hours, but an hour and 45 minutes. That's a, that's a pretty good amount of uh, time to, uh, to ink and chat with everybody. I've had a good time tonight. You guys have uh, helped to make this a, a really good day because, uh, you know, I, I, I worked real hard today. And like I say, I didn't sell a car and it was driving me nuts. Um, that's <laughs> when you when you work real hard all day, but you didn't make any money. When you're commission-based, it's like, ah, what did I do with my day? <laughs> but tomorrow's a new day. Tomorrow uh, hopefully goes better. And uh, it's, it's you know, we're in a time where I can't easily hang out with my friends, uh, certainly not my family and everything, and, and it's rough. So to be able to occasionally do a live stream and get to talk with all of you, answer some questions, pose some questions, talk comics and things that we like, it's a real privilege. I, 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 I'm glad that I can do that with everybody here. It means a lot to me. Um, so thank you all. I really appreciate that. I'm going to uh, end the live stream now. Um, thank you very much for being here. It means a lot to me. Uh, I will uh, see you soon. Um, and uh, just know that I'm working on another Comic Tropes until I see you soon, uh, next time. I'm sort of stuttering out this uh, end because I'm getting tired. But uh, until I see you next time,